there again, guys. Happy Monday. So we're going to give this another try. A little technical connectivity issues. So let's hope it's going well now. Thanks for joining me again. Uh, if you're new, my name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery patterns and kits. I'm the author of Stone Stitch Embroidery, and I'm here every night uh, for some relaxing and crafting uh, every night, every weeknight at 9.30 p.m. Central. So thanks for joining me again. I am working on quilting my splendid sampler quilt along quilt. Uh, I am straight line stitching. Hey again, Libby, thanks for joining me again. I'm straight line stitching the center area, or not straight line stitching, I'm stitching in the ditch the, straight, the uh, center area, which just means stitching in between the blocks. And I will be straight line stitching the border at another time. Uh, I don't know when that time will be yet because uh, tomorrow I won't be here uh, in the evening. It's my husband's birthday, so we will be out and about for that. And uh, uh, Wednesday through Friday, I am going to have a few little embroidery lesson-y things. Uh, tomorrow, if you are on my newsletter list, you'll be getting a newsletter talking about my Craft a Happy Life sale. So we will be doing a stitch along for, it's, you know, in reverse for you guys now, but for the Craft a Happy Life embroidery pattern uh, towards the end-ish, middle-ish of August. So I will have info on that going out uh, tomorrow. There's a link to my newsletter in this Facebook post here if you're interested in that. And then, uh, so that's Wednesday through Friday. We'll be doing some little how-tos on how to get nice and even stitches when you are, when you're embroidering, you know, nice, clean, even stitches and how to start and stop your embroidery. We'll also look at the different sizes that you of a line that you can get with the different number of threads and different types of threads. We'll be doing that on Thursday and some other fun things for the rest of the week. So we will pick up this splendid sampler uh, another time when we have some open, uh, open time because on Monday we will be starting the uh, Jacqueline Steve's I Love Home quilt along, the block of the month club. So we'll be doing that the first block and then we'll be doing the stitch along for the craft a happy life. So more info on all that in my newsletter that will go out tomorrow. So thanks again guys. Let's get going. I would like to finish up this top tonight. We did halfway of the horizontal lines last night. We already have the, or on a Friday, we already have the vertical lines done. So it's just the other half of those horizontal lines. So let's do it. Thanks for joining me again guys. All right, got the machine all ready here. Hey, Tracy, hey, Julie. Okay, so I flipped, I rotated my quilt around. So it would be easy again for me to have like this giant roll of fabric by me. So let's, let's just feed it in to get started. Same thing that we've been doing. It's kind of fun to review all the little blocks again, though I'm, I'm really liking that. So, all right, here is where we're gonna start. We did uh, the six rows going the other way. Uh, now, now we're starting from this side and doing the last six lines of stitching. I'm gonna get my grippets out in a second. Just locking that first, first stitch area and uh, We'll get situated here. So, okay. Getting my little grippets. These are uh, by Sewing Mates. Oh, I don't think I have the link this time. I'll put it back in, uh, in the Facebook post. Or you can just check out some of my earlier Facebook posts, Facebook videos. I uh, have a link if you're interested in the grippets. But they have been really nice for helping me move my quilt along versus me having to wear the little the little gloves. And you know, it's just straight line stitching, so I don't know if I'd wear the gloves, but you know, it it is still helpful to move a lot of this bulk along. Oh, and we are also on Bob and Watch here. So if something starts to look kooky, I don't know if you guys can see it from your angle, but uh, I'm gonna keep checking to see if we have bobbin left. 
It just seems like we've been going with this one bobbin for an awfully long time, so whenever I start thinking that, that usually means that we don't have much left. So we'll see. Oh, look at this. I forgot about this one. This one's so fun. The, uh, the big and easy, uh, foundation paper piece block. That's one of my favorite things about, uh, us quilting this now is I get to see all these blocks again. I would still like to do some more of the blocks. The Splendid Sampler is going on right now again, uh, round two of making blocks. And I know a lot of people are still uh, making blocks and are, and are part of this second group, which is awesome. So I would still like to make a few, a few of the blocks that are happening right now. They're released every Thursday. So we'll see. My parents are out of town now. It's sad. But they'll actually, huh, they're actually coming back up in like a week. Uh, we're gonna watch a twins slash brewers game coming up here. Depends who you're talking to, if it's a twins game or a brewers game, I suppose. <laughs> well, that'll be fun. This makes me need to get your splendid sampler blocks out. Awesome! And get it set together. Oh, Josa, are you are you uh, close to sewing them together? Or do you, do you have them all done? I, I can't remember if you, if you said or not. Ooh, we're a little shaky tonight too, aren't we? Sewing machines shaking my table. Ooh. Bob and check, still good. I know, Joseph, that's how I feel quilting this because I've had it put away for, for a while. I've had this quilt put away and now that I'm quilting and I'm just stitching in, in between each block, but man, it's going fast. And obviously if you're doing a different kind of quilting, it might take a lot longer, but uh, for just doing this stitch in the ditch. I'm like cruising on this thing. It, it's more and more feeling like an actual quilt. So I'm, I'm pretty stoked about that. All right, let's trim. Done with row one. Get the little scissors out. All right, then I'll go to the end of the row here. Hello, hello, everyone who's joining in now. I'm hoping to finish the center area of this quilt tonight. So the main area, the area with all the blocks. I mean, I won't trim all the little threads or anything like that yet, but I am hoping to finish this middle section because next time we work on it, I'm gonna start rolling this up. Next time we work on it, uh, which I don't know when it'll be, which is sad, but next time we can focus on the borders and I actually, I have a plan for that and I think it's going to go relatively quick too. So we might have, you know, if we get some time to work on this, we might have a quilt done pretty quick, which would be awesome. All right, just rolling this up to get to the second row here. I'm hoping to finish them all tonight, so I have six to do. You have your blocks done. Oh, 111, nice. Oh, but can't decide how to set them. Oh, yes. I'm itching to get back sewing. Well, now's a good time to, to sketch out or look up different ideas to, to set them. And however you end up setting them, it's gonna end up being awesome and still like a huge accomplishment doing this whole quilt.
But yeah, Joza, once you um, start getting them together, be sure to share it in the Penguin and Fish Crafters group. I'd love to, love to see what you're, how it's going. And anybody, if you, if you want to share what you're working on, share what you're crafting, uh, go check out my Penguin and Fish Crafters group on, on Facebook. There's a link to it in this Facebook video post. Uh, I'd love to see see what you're up to, see what you're working on. Oh, we're starting a little late anyway, Sherry. I had some connection issues, but I don't know, we reset the internet and now it seems to be going fine. All right, moving fabric along. Oh, so I did for my fabric roll over here, you know, I, I've started to roll, let's see if I can go a little further. Yeah, so I started to roll this up so I can fit the um, quilt in the neck of my machine. And uh, I uh, we talked about those bike clips that some people use to hold that roll, the fabric roll from the quilt together. Uh, I ordered some of those and they should be coming tomorrow, so... Uh, I know we won't be using it for this quilt anymore for a while because this will be the last day working on it for a little, but there are other quilts happening. Uh, the block of the month, the, uh, the, um, yeah, the block of the month, the Jacqueline Steves I Love Home project that will be turned into a quilt. So we'll use it for that. And uh, the uh, Krista quilt, uh, Charming Chevron's quilt, we'll be using it for that too. So another fun little tool we'll, we'll get a test out soon. Apparently that's been <laughs> what I'm into lately is testing out all these new gadgets, new to me gadgets, different use for other things, gadgets. And the thing is I still feel like you don't need any of the gadgets to make a quilt, but um, now that I'm playing around with them, it, it, Sure thing makes things a little bit easier. It's kind of fun. All right, we are got a few more in this row, and then we can move on. I think these grippets are have been really kind of helping me with with not having puckers in the back. I mean, or maybe I just pinned a lot, but it doesn't seem like I pinned all that much. Um, just a pin in every block, really. But I'm able to kind of hold the fabric down and stretch it out a little bit, stretch out the top a little like this. And I think, I think that's been doing, you know, a good job of keeping my back nice. You know, now that I say it, I'll probably have a totally messed up back, but meh. We'll see how it goes. I'm just happy to be quilting this this guy. This project is starting to feel closer to the to the finished <laughs> pile, which, you know, feels good. Even though I know it won't be yet, but still. So I'm back tacking at the end of my rows. Uh, that's not typically what, uh, you know, quilt police are looking for, I suppose. Uh, what you would do is, oh, look, oh, I have something happening here. Maybe that's it for my bobbin. Oh, let's see. But, uh, instead you want to just sew to the end and then cut long strings and then after you're all done, you can uh, sew in those strings into, into the quilt to secure it. Oh, here, let's go up this way. Yep, I think that was it for the bobbin. Ha! Huh, awesome. Oh, wait, yeah, that, that was it. So let's pop this out. I don't think I've changed the bobbin yet with, with my extension table here. So we'll see how that goes. Empty bobbin! And we only had, like like literally like a three quarters of an inch left. All right, I got other bobbins wound right away, so that's gonna be helpful. Uh, let's put this guy in. 
So the way I always remember this is uh, I always have the thread going out the top so it kind of mimics uh, uh, the bobbin holder. So I always, um, you know, at the top. So I have this thing at the top and the thread at the top and one's pointing towards me. This guy, this guy right here, I don't know all the terms for all these, but that is uh, pointing towards me and this guy, the thread is pointing away from me. And that's how I always remember it. Towards and away. Okay, let's get this guy in. Oh no, I have a Sears Kenmore machine from the 70s. That's, that's what I'm using. So nothing fancy at all. It has no special stitches for decorative purposes. It just has stitches for like dressmaking and stuff. Pretty basic. Ooh, this is not, something's not in here right. Oh. Well, maybe this would be easier without the extension table in my way. Can't quite see what's happening underneath here. All right, let's try that again. Oh, your bobbin's just like, like this? Oh, so the Bernina ones are similar. Oh yeah, I guess, you know, I've used my mom's machine and she is a Bernina and uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty, it's like the same thing, isn't it? Just about. All right, we are laced up again. So, all right, now I have to go back to this tiny little area that we didn't finish. But I think that'll be a lot easier than trying to get back to the center somewhere. Where are you? Right there. Look, literally like a half of an inch or something. Ah, well, let's do a little back tack. You know, it'll, it'll be a little more back tacky down here, but I don't mind. I just want a nice quilt for the bed. I don't, I don't care if all my threads are not perfectly tucked in or, or anything. If I want to practice doing that, I'll do it for a different, different quilt. Oh, your favorite machine was a Kenmore that you got in 69. Nice. Yeah, it's a pretty solid thing. I mean, I, I've dropped a very heavy shelf on it before, uh, which kind of dented and cracked the top, but it still works, uh, works just right. <laughs> I do get it, uh, I take it in to get cleaned every once in a while and, and I need to start oiling it. I, I was going to start, I was going to oil it before I started this up again. That's something I, that's kind of new to me, the whole oiling by myself the, the self maintenance of the machine let's call it call it that i'm i'm trying to get better at that and that's just you know from your guys's advice and helping me out as i you know sew more often and quilt more often all right next row so we didn't waste much time at all with that uh that bobbin perfect just the way I like it. Okay. Oh, we did this one right here is the next. Oh, and here's my block is coming up. I designed uh, one of the embroidered blocks for this project. My little doily. Once that block comes up again, and I don't think it has, um, I think I would probably hear, but um, we'll maybe stitch another one of these guys. I would like to try stitching one big. So like this is just, this is just six inches, uh, six inches finished. I'd like to blow it up and do like a whole like lap size quilt with it. I think that'd be kind of fun. Stitch with yarn, like big yarn stitches instead of um, embroidery floss. I don't know, just do some weird, fun, big stitching. Ooh, a singer from the 1940s. The bobbins metal, but the bottom side instead of the front line in yours. Huh. I always get nervous around new machines just, uh, just because of the bobbins and, you know, I don't have a top loading machine, so whenever I'm near top loading machines where the where the bobbin just or I guess drop in a drop in bobbin, that always kind of freaks me out if I'm putting it in the right way. And you know, a lot of the newer ones have 
nice pictures on and stuff, so that's helpful. <laughs> but I don't know, I get paranoid. But then once you learn, you learn and it's done. Yeah, I have uh, my husband's great-grandmother's old Singer machine. I think we've had that out here before for the Splendid Sampler. And we looked it up. What was it? I think it was 1927? 1920 something. Maybe 1921 or 1927. I, I'm pretty sure there was a 20 in there. I have all that information. I'll have to look it up again. I wonder if I have it here, actually. Eh, I don't know. I'll have to look. I don't know. One of, one of these times we should break that machine out again. I think that'd be fun, fun to use. It's so pretty. That's just the truth, <laughs> you know. Uh, just those old Singer, black Singer machines with all the gold decals on are just so pretty that it's worth using them just to look at them, you know. How is the garden doing? It is fabulous. Uh, we have zucchinis all over the place and I just picked our first acorn squash. Uh, we have two cantaloupes, or cantaloupes. I was reading, reading the word block and uh, talking. So cantaloupes, two cantaloupes growing. I haven't picked those yet. I think those are probably bigger. We've, we've never done cantaloupes before and Tons of kale. We are definitely not buying many veggies lately and just cooking cooking a ton of roasted vegetables and kale salads and all that. It's so awesome. I love it so much. Uh, we have legitimately kept the rabbits out this year. We just have a squirrel that, that goes in and I don't know gnaws on a few things, a few zucchinis, so not happy about that. We tried to get them before, but that didn't work. So squirrels is the next issue. One of our tomato plants, um, one of my tomato plants has, uh, I guess, a fungus. My dad took master gardening classes, so he knows all this stuff, but I think that's just from overwatering and having it maybe the plants too close to each other. Oh, Melanie, did we pass your, uh, pass your spool? Oh yeah, we'll, we'll get, we'll uh, see it again when we do the next row. Uh, but yes, all in all, garden is fabulous. Onions are growing, but uh, they're not big enough yet. Oh! <laughs> Don't you love looking for your block in everyone's quilt? Uh -huh. Yeah, it's funny. I do do that. <laughs> I do when I see people's quilt. I'm like, oh, where did they put mine in the quilt? Or, and what fabrics did they use? And how did they stitch it and stuff? And and did they stitch it? Because I know, I know a lot of people got a little nervous with the embroidery and then didn't do the embroidery. So I'm curious about that. Oh. That's funny, I do look for it. <laughs> I'm admitting it. All right, this row is done. Okay, let's snip that back thread. And get on to the next row. So I'm rolling it up as we go. I'll show your spool again, Melanie. Let's, once I get that far. Oh, here it is. Little spool, sideways spool tonight. But yeah, that was so much fun. Oh, look, here are some of the names popping out with, uh, with some quilting on the back there. That's kind of fun to see. <laughs> We're straight down the middle. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that's how it goes. Okay, next row. Ooh, let's get a little more thread here. All 
ready. What do we have? I think we still have like one, two, three. Oh, just three. One, two, three. Awesome. So three more. We'll do them all tonight, uh, no matter what, because I, I, I would like to get this middle section done, you know, unless the machine just completely straight up dies, but I'm hoping that's not the case. So if we're uh, a little over, we actually might be a little under if these go quick in our time tonight. Yeah, here's uh, my little Be Brave embroidery. I know a bunch of you stitched, stitched that guy up. I think that's still available. It's still available for free. Uh, I'll put the link up again sometime uh, when we're done here. I think it's... Ooh, I don't know if I want to guess. I think it's peng, P-E-N-G dot fish, F-I-S-H, backslash, uh, be brave PDF. I, I think that's all lowercase. I think that's the link to the free be brave pattern, but I'll have to double check that. I'll, I'll put that in the notes or I'll, I'll update this post with, with that info. Ooh, I'm getting a little squiggly here. It happens. I'm stitching in the ditch as best I can, but you know, once we get to, I'm using this dark blue thread and once we get to these lighter colors here, I mean, you're gonna be able to see, see that dark thread quite a bit more. But I think I had more dark, more things that the dark blue would um, fit in, especially on the back. The back is all that dark blue. So went for the dark blue thread. Ooh, quilt's getting heavy again. And here's the block with my selvages in. We did that in the last row. Oh, it's so fun to look at. Man, I remember these embroideries took forever, but they are so darling. These are all done with one strand of floss, which gives it like that really thin, delicate look. That one was fun. They were all fun, actually, but you know. Embroidery is always fun. Yeah, so just uh, on that, oh, you just got home last night from Minnesota. Oh, fun, Carol. <laughs> well, you picked a beautiful time to be here. It was gorgeous these past couple days. Oh, it might have been super raining, I guess, depending on where you are. But here in Minneapolis, it was pretty dang nice outside. But uh, just to... If you're just coming in, just to let you guys know again, I am not going to be here tomorrow night. It is John, the husband's birthday tomorrow, so we'll be going out for that. And I will have a newsletter going out tomorrow that talks about our Craft a Happy Life sale for the kits. It, it's not even listed yet, and we're going to be doing like an early bird listing sale for it and that will have more info will be in my newsletter in tomorrow's newsletter so if you're not on the newsletter there's a link in this facebook post as well so that will be coming up real soon here and then we'll be doing some embroidery how-to videos over the next few days when i get back on wednesday so i think that'll be kind of fun so if you have any embroidery questions, anything you're struggling with or, or anything, uh, let me know and I will be sure to get that included in, in the live stream and, and in the newsletter and stuff. Because if you have that question, chances are someone else has that question too. And I mean, you don't have to feel scared or nervous about asking or anything like that. We will get it done.
figure it out. Oh, you're in the eastern part of the state. Oh, 22 quilt shops, fun! Oh man, that had to be nuts. Well, in the eastern part of the state, we're pretty east. Did you end up, did you go to SR Harris by any chance? That was that one where I got my, uh, that giant crazy warehouse of fabric where I got my uh, sparkly hourglass block um, fabric. Yeah, this one we just did. I haven't done one of those in a while where I do the, the uh, shop, the big shop tour going to a bunch of shops. You know what? I need to use up all my fabric and then I will, <laughs> I'll have to go do that again and, and stack up again and make a ton more quilts, I think. I went through all my, oh, Western, oh, okay. I went through all my fabric recently. There's a little spun sampler, sampler label. And I have a lot more penguin and fish fabric than I thought I did. So one of these days I am going to do a little sale for that too. So I will be selling, I think, yardage of, of my penguin and fish fabric and from back in the day to some of the older, oops, lost my scissors, some of the older collections too. So I have, I have fabric from every single collection and we'll have to do something with that soon too. Or I'll have to think of something, so. And then I organized a whole pile of my other fabric as well. So now I can actually see everything and uh, can uh, more easily pick fabric for projects. And now it's more inspiring to look at the projects and, or the, look at the fabric and kind of imagine projects for it. Uh, for the I Love Home, uh, the I Love Home block block of the month, the Jacqueline Steves I Love Home. We'll be starting that on Monday. I need to pick out fabric for that yet. Uh, if you have gotten her newsletter, I think there's a Pinterest page and there's some links of some colorways that she's put together or some images and I might print those out and head to my fabric stash and use those as inspiration to pick some fabric. I'm not quite sure where I want to go with it. I have, I have kind of this fabric that I'm thinking about using that's really kind of deep, rich kind of browns and I don't know, kind of traditional looking. I'm, I'm thinking of using those, but I'd like it to still feel clean and fresh somehow. So I don't know, I, I might pop in some uh, like a fun color or something. I don't know, but I will be, I will be hanging out, uh, Hanging out with my fabric on uh, uh, over the weekend, picking out fabric for my my I love home quilt. Uh, if you do join her newsletter, at it's at JacquelineSteves.com, and I and I put a link to it in the past. I don't think I have it in this post either, um, but in my last post, I think there's a link to it. I'll have a link to it in the newsletter too tomorrow. So if you're sign up for the newsletter, just click from there. But once you sign up, she'll send you an email. It's free, but uh, you need to be on the list to get the emails and the patterns. So once you sign up, she'll send you fabric requirements for the whole, the whole quilt. So I need to break that out and start looking. That'll be fun shopping in my own fabric. That's, that's nice. Not my own fabric, but fabric in the house. Do any of you have like that urge to just use all your fabric up? Like when will be the day that I use up every single piece of fabric? I think about that. I suppose it kind of makes me a little anxious. Um, is it a mystery block of the month? I think it's a little bit of a mystery. I don't know. I think she's... Actually, no, I don't think it, it's... I'm not sure if it's a mystery. I think if you 
go to the post, I think you can see them all. There's only four blocks. So they're larger blocks and there's, there's only four and they have applique and embroidery with them. I mean, you actually don't have to do either of that. You don't have to do the, the house designs at all. It's four little cute houses. I think there's a picture of it uh, on the blog. Oh, no, 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 using all the fabric is a nightmare funny. Uh, so uh, you get directions for them and you don't know which one's coming next, I don't think. But I think you can see them all, I'm not positive. But it's awfully cute. So we'll be we're, we'll be doing that whole quilt for our next designer series project. But it's it's only four blocks, so uh, I think it'll get finished in December-ish. We'll get one block a month starting August seventh, and on August seventh we also get all the cutting instructions for the entire quilt. So we'll start out cutting all the block pieces all at once. So that'll be kind of nice. Then, then when we get the the next blocks, everything will be cut up and ready to go. Cause that's the worst. I that's my least favorite thing to do is is cutting. So to have it all done would be pretty sweet. And then the rest of the cutting will just be for applique pieces and stuff. I am going to applique and embroider mine. I liked the combo of that. Like here's an example. This one has applique and embroidery, and there was another one. Let's see if I can find it on here. That had a lot of, that was like a combo of embroidery and applique. Oh, I can't find it right now. If it pops up, we'll take a look. Um, but I think I'm gonna do that. A combo of, of applique and embroidery. So I think, I think that'll be kind of fun to play around with. But yeah, so that project starts August 7th, which is like next week already. So I'm pretty stoked about that. I'll also be doing a blog post about that um, coming up, but I'll, I'll let you guys know that in, in an email. There are some fancy giveaways for it too, so uh, you might want to join up just for the giveaways. All right, finishing this row. I have one more row to do tonight, and then we have this top done. Did I sew here? Yeah, okay. Thought I missed a ditch. This one has uh, applique and embroidery in it as well, but that's not the one I'm looking for. Uh, there was that one with that little sewing machine where the applique and embroidery were kind of integrated really well, and that's that's kind of how I want how I want to do the I Love Home quilt. But I think it'd be really pretty embroidering it all in one color, honestly, but I don't know. I like the idea of some applique. Oh gosh, you know what though, now that I say that out loud, I kind of want to do embroidery all one color, like a, like red work almost. Uh, dang, I don't know, I'm gonna have to make that decision on, uh, on this weekend when I look for fabric. Maybe I'll find the perfect fabric that'll look perfect with some red work or even like brown work or something. Oh man, might be embroidering instead, I don't know. It would be cute all as applique too, I suppose. <laughs> oh, decisions. Let me know uh, if you guys are doing that, that I like home and if you're planning on embroidering or, or appliqueing, I'm kind of curious. All right, this is our last row. Oh, let me see if that that block pops up. Oh, I'm not seeing it. I thought I had a dark blue background, but I'm not seeing it with other dark blues. All right, last row of the center. A little bit of thread again. So this is the most bulk we'll have to deal with this time. All right. I'm excited to try those, those um, biking pants uh, grips. They're to grip the bottom of your, your pants so they don't get in the, um, in the, in the gears of your bike. But I'm going to try using them for, 
uh, to hold this quilt roll together. I'm going to have to find, when we're done with this row, I'm going to look for that, that block because I want to show you what I mean for the I Love Home. You're going to do an applique embroidery combo. Yeah, maybe I should still do that. I, I do think that's fun. That's originally what I was thinking. Maybe I should just stick to it, huh? Stick to my first thought. Ooh, let's get this guy in my lap a little bit better. Okay. I kind of want to take a look at the back of this too. See if we can see all the little squares we're sewing. That's a lot of fabric there. Ooh, I'm having to help it through quite a bit right now. I think it's just because there's a lot of bulk everywhere. Oh, you love the detail that embroidery can give. You know what? That's a really good point. We can really play around with embroidery a lot, I think. The trick is going to be, and I think this is maybe why I'm shying away from it a little bit, but also why I think it'd be fun, is uh, what parts do we embroider and what parts do we applique? We're going to have to make those decisions along the way. So that'll, that'll be kind of kind of the uh, debate, I suppose, in my head is what to do where. Oh, I see it. It's up here. So uh, I just have to unroll, unroll the fabric or the quilt a little bit, and then we can see, oh, what's going on? Then we can see the one that's, oh, geez, we're getting a little stuck here for some reason. I'm going to lift up. Oh, it's just because it's really dang thick there. Ugh. All right, we're going to try going around again. Oh, you received your grips today. Okay, awesome, Carol. You'll have to let me know how they, they work out for you. So far, I mean, I'm, you know, a novice quilter. But so far, I'm totally liking them. Ugh. All right, let's give this a try. I think I got to kind of force it through there. All right, there we go. It's a lot of bulk in those those corners there. But we're through. We made it. I think. <laughs> I think we'll see. I'm going to have to check check that. I think I think we might have a funny little thing there. Oh yeah, I I'll just have to trim. Yeah, I just got a little funny loop there. I'll, I can just trim trim that thread when we're done. The other thing that makes me a little nervous about doing embroidery and applique is that I'm feeling super tempted to needle turn applique everything. <laughs> and that just takes so long. Uh, and I don't know if I if I want to do that because you know I want to do the craft a happy life stitch along and uh, some other projects too. And if we needle turn applique, that might just take the whole month to do. Maybe I don't know. Maybe I'm maybe my brain's exaggerating that for me a little bit. I'll have to think about it. I think it'd be pretty cute needle turn applique with some embroidery. That's basically what this block is that I'm going to show you with that little sewing machine. Ooh. Machine's sounding a little cranky. I think now's the time. Now that we're done with this project, now, uh, well, for now, I think I'll have to oil it up and change needles and check it all out again before we do the I Love Home on Monday.
Actually, we probably won't start sewing on Monday. We'll just be cutting. But definitely time to get this guy up to par again. All right, that is it for the top. Let's uh, let's trim it out. All right, and the bottom as well. The bobbin. All right, so we are done with this quilt for now. Uh, the entire center should be done. So let me pull this back up onto the table here. So look, we can start seeing, seeing the back. We're seeing the little squares. Yay! So that's all that's going to happen for that center area. We're just going to leave these squares, which, you know, we did from stitching in the ditch. Oh, here's that, here's that block. So this is a pretty cute combo of um, needle turn applique and some embroidery. So I think I think this might be how I do the I Love Home quilt, with just a, a touch of both, you know? Some embroidery, even some of the main characters are embroidered, and then other pieces are uh, are appliqued. So I don't know. That'll be the that'll be the challenge. What's what's embroidered and what's appliqued. But I, I really think this look is pretty it's just sweet and darling, so I think this might be what I'm going for. Uh, I'll start with my fabric that I look for this weekend and go from there. But there we go. So stitch in the ditch. Uh, you can't really tell from the front that much is happening, but it is still being held together, which is all I need it to do for a quilt. But we do get some nice, nice little squares on the back. And especially with when we do some straight line stitching, I think it'll look really pretty. Uh, no real puckers. I think we're doing doing okay. I mean, I'm not perfectly straight uh, with my stitching, but, you know, close enough. But awesome. So there we are, uh, guys. And uh, I'm going to flip you around and we will finish it up for this evening. Hello, we actually got done a hair earlier than I thought stitching all those rows. So we have the entire center. Oh, here's another one that's uh, embroidery and applique. So that's cute too. So I don't know, I think, I think I'll have to stick with that. I'll embroider and applique the, the um, I Love Home Jacqueline Steves Black of the Month uh, starting on Monday. So I think that's the plan. Uh, so, I, again, I won't be here tomorrow. It is John's birthday. We'll be bike riding and, and hanging out there. Uh, there will be a, a newsletter going out tomorrow, though, about the uh, Craft a Happy Life stitch along and a little bit more on the Jacqueline Steves um, Block of the Month. There will be a link to that in the email. So uh, be sure to sign up if you're not already signed up. Uh, the link is in this Facebook post and uh, we will get going on that and I'll have some more emails or some more videos on how to embroider coming up so all right guys that is it for tonight thanks for hanging out with me again I sure do love it and love chit-chatting with you guys uh, this video will stay on YouTube or stay on Facebook and it will also go up on YouTube at Penguin and Fish Movies so have a great evening, guys. I will catch you again on Wednesday for some embroidery. All right, guys. Good night.